Well, today's the big day. I found our first baby bull snake pipping overnight. There he is. Since he has pipped his shell, I actually took a few slices out of it, that means that the rest of the clutch is ready and we will do a cutting later today. We're just going to open up the window a little bit more since sometimes they can get stuck with their head out of the egg and they can actually suffocate themselves. So now that we know he can comfortably move in and out of the egg, we're going to put these back and let's check on the eggs in perlite. These should theoretically be hatching today too. Let's see. Oh, there's one. I'm not quite ready to come out yet. Well, it's been about five to six hours since I checked in and saw the couple that had started pipping, so it's time to cut the eggs. And we're just going to cut a small window at the top of the egg because that's where the air bubble is so you don't have to worry about cutting the snake itself if you just cut on the top and we'll let them grab their first breath of air and take a peek at what we've got here's the vermiculite tray and our one that had pipped earlier this morning he's got his little nose out and tongue flicking everything looks good so we are going to be taking just small razor blades and cutting a small little window at the top And now we have the Moldy two ones. eggs that molded out. Well, not completely molded out. We, in one of our videos, we treated their mold with Lotrimin powder, and there was really very little, excuse me, there was very really little mold that developed after treating them, but we did keep pouring some of it on occasionally. Every once in a while, a little bit more mold would show up, so we put more Lotrimin powder mm -hmm. on and brush out the mold, and. They seem to still have developed all the way, they sure but we do. will figure that out right now, I guess. Yeah, he looks, looks developed. See, I see a baby. Oh, there Looks a little smaller than the others, but I still see a baby. Uh. Well, great news. It seems like they all developed. Hopefully they're all alive. I don't see why they wouldn't be. They're definitely not ready to come out yet. We cut them all open, but still only the two original ones have their noses poked out. So we'll just let them sit for the rest of the day today and tomorrow, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, another really exciting thing is our two eggs that developed mold during incubation still develop themselves. So I'm really excited for that. That just goes to show that having mold is not the end of the world when it comes to reptile eggs. They are very resilient. So in the vermiculite, we still just have the one that was brave enough to poke his head out. But over in the perlite bin, we have one that's completely out. Aww. Don't mess with my brothers. <laughs> You're so scary. Yeah, a little tail rattle. <laughs> It's now 
the next morning, and we have a baby out in the vermiculite tray, and lots of babies making their own cuts, despite cuts being available for them in their own eggs. I think this one's about to come out. You can see the spit bubbles. He's starting to breathe. We have some exciting news about the previously moldy eggs. This little guy just had his head out until we opened up the lid. We'll see if the other one makes it too. Some of you might remember an experiment we did with the eggs where we split up the clutch between perlite and vermiculite, and I haven't m noticed many differences until now, but check out how messy all of the eggs are from the other babies slithering over them in the vermiculite compared to perlite. The eggs are a lot cleaner and the babies are not spilling the perlite as much into the other eggs as they were in the vermiculite. So we actually had to move some of the babies from this bin over to keep it a little bit cleaner for the eggs that haven't hatched yet. So, so far I'm kind of liking perlite just for its cleanliness. We have two out in this bin and one, two, three, four, five, six. I think you're over here, seven and eight in the perlite. A couple of these, again, are from the vermiculite bin. We just moved them over because they were making too much of a mess for the ones that are still in the egg, which looks like one, two, there's one in there, three, that's empty, and four. Four more in there. We've got one and two still to hatch in the perlite. Oh, three, there's one in there too. And on the second night, one of our moldy egg babies came out. He looks great. I'm not sure about this baby though. Hopefully he made it, only time will tell. Even right out of the egg, some of them have big personalities, we'll say. Check this out. They think they're so fierce. Into the rack. Although they think they're fierce, their teeth are almost non-existent, so when they do bite, they can't actually do anything, despite what they think. Oh, that was rude. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, I have awesome news. Uh, it's about four days after the first couple of eggs started pipping, and not only did our last few remaining good eggs hatch, but so did the second moldy egg. He is out, honestly, I didn't think he was going to make it, but he is looking great. He's still on his way out of the egg, and we actually moved him in here to give him more uh, constant humidity levels in the incubator. And all of his brothers and sisters have already left their eggs, so he can just take his time. That means we had 100% of our eggs hatch, which is fantastic. 25 of 25 all developed and they look good. This tells me that both vermiculite and perlite do a good job at incubating eggs. Although I did notice that the vermiculite, I had to add water a couple extra times too to keep the right humidity levels and it was a little bit more messy during the hatching process. So I personally like perlite based on this uh, experience, but both of them will work just fine. So what now, you ask? Well, after about a week, these babies will be going through their first shed, after which we'll be offering them their first meal, which will consist of a frozen thawed large pinky mouse. And after they can show us they're sufficiently able to process their food and they can go to the bathroom just fine, then we will be making these snakelings available to the general public. And that includes you, in case anyone watching this is interested in a baby, they will be getting shipped across the country to their new homes. If you would like to watch a video of Brad laying this clutch and me putting them in the incubator for the first time, just click right here. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Wait, wait, before I forget, next week, so July, the week of July 17th, our clutch of hognose snakes are due to hatch, and about half of them should be albino, so it'll be a really exciting clutch to watch hatch. But we won't know until we cut them, so because of this, we are going to be doing a live stream cutting on YouTube. 
But since we don't know exactly what day they're going to hatch or exactly when the uh, cutting will be, I will be reviving Snake Discovery's Twitter account so you can follow it to get updates and uh, notifications on when exactly that cutting will be. So again, if you want to experience that with me, follow Snake Discovery on Twitter. Okay, bye. Babies!